All right, so, hey guys, this is Tommy Migrant coming at you with another Locker Room Talk. Uh, today we've got so many great questions, I mean legit questions, real questions from real people that have found me either online or in person, people that I know. Um, you know, they're trying to, they're doing their best to commit, to live a healthy and active lifestyle. And just like I had along the way, I had so many questions that people like Mike French answered for me or my coach Melanie Bowen answered for me and, and that helped me through the process. I mean, that's what I'm doing here today is just maybe answering some questions that not only these people have, but that, that you might have too. And that's why we're doing this, man. Locker room talk coming at you. So here's where we're going to start. Some of these kind of go together. And so I tried to pick out the ones that I thought really could hit home with people that are on the journey. They're in the journey. You know, they're, they're, you know, maybe they've started, they've already made the choice to commit and now they're hitting some obstacles, maybe at the beginning or at the end. All right. So, you know, the first question comes, uh, actually I had two guys ask me the same question last week, Mike Klein and Javier, Javier uh, Sepulveda, both of them are friends of mine on Facebook and they both said, uh, ask a question about physical pain. They said, you know, by far the worst part for me is the physical pain of the workouts, you know, how I feel, you know, at night when I'm laying there, you know, how did you deal with the pain? And wow, you know, I just going back, I remember, you know, I was 270 pounds the first time that, that I decided to work out. And I just remember there were, there were times when there was so much pain. I mean, it felt really like the mafia had five guys take me out back and beat me with baseball bats. That's how intense the physical pain was, the muscle soreness was. But I had been stagnant for so long and had made bad choices for so long. I kind of felt like there were times I would lay on the ground in the middle of the workout. You know, maybe it was ab ripper or, or one of the workouts, chest and back, something like that, plyo. And I would cry because it hurt so bad. And, and I just knew that if I wanted to get where I wanted to go, where I had to go, I had no choice. Let's remember this. I had no choice, but to lose the weight. I had no choice but to get my life correct. I knew I had to go through the pain. And so I had to flip the switch on that said, you know what, this pain is like my atonement. This is my payback for all the bad choices that I had ever made. For me to get where I need to go, I need to feel this pain. I need to go through this physical pain. And it really was the physical pain of it that kept me in line with the eating. Because I sat there and I thought, if I'm going to go through this much pain, why would I screw this thing up? By going and eating pizza or going and, and, and eating chicken wings or by going to a buffet, the China buffet. I mean, it didn't make any sense. So I think that it's all about perspective. I mean, if you're looking at this pain as something bad, okay, then it's going to be enough to defeat you. But if you look at it as something that's liberating, something that's, that's empowering you, that's you're finally doing this. You're finally taking the steps that you thought about doing for so long, but it's part of the journey. It's part of the process. It's, it's part of what you have to go through. All right? And I'm going to tell you, it's like, it's like running on a stone road. Eventually, it becomes asphalt. Okay? Eventually, it becomes asphalt. It won't hurt quite so bad. All right? But you have to look at it as a liberating thing. And it really is. I mean, it's an incredible thing. Your pain is your body telling you that change is, is happening, that change is taking place. And I always say... Embrace the pain. Embrace it. Embrace it because it, it really, it's a wonderful thing. Okay, so it's all how you look at it. And that leads me to, uh, you know, another question. Um, a friend of mine from Facebook, again, this is a younger guy. He's about, I think, uh, you know, 20 years old or so. His name is uh, Mike Mihalik. He's from Gig Harbor, Washington. I, I actually um, had met Mike once. So, okay, here's this guy. He's been through a year Okay, he started a year ago. He's been through the pain. He's, he's through it. He says to me, okay, I, I've been going hard at P90X and Insanity for the past year straight. And I, I've never been more fit in my life. In fact, my initial goal was to just get extremely fit. And now that I'm there, I'm finding it really difficult to stay the course and keep on going. You know, I'm, I find myself asking, why do I keep working out? So how did you keep going and, and, and do you have any advice for me? Because right now I could use some additional motivation. And so this is really proof, guys. This is proof that there, you, don't, you don't just ask questions about what you're doing at the beginning. I mean, there's going to be times and moments during the journey when you begin to have times and moments of, of doubt. When you say, is it worth it? 
Is it worth it? Well, here's what I would tell you, Mike, that your initial goal was to get super fit. That was your goal. And you've done that. You've achieved that. So you've, you've now set the standard for yourself. I'm there. You've hit what we call what's next. What do I do now? Okay. My initial goal was weight loss. It was to lose weight. And all of a sudden, I take my after picture and it hits me. Oh my gosh, I, I'm not going to lose any more weight. This is no longer about weight loss. Just like your goal isn't, is no longer about getting super fit. It needs to be about maintaining a super fit lifestyle. All right, so my goal is always <clears throat> now, instead of weight loss, it's to remain living a healthy and active lifestyle. I mean, I'm not trying to live at 6% body fat. To be honest with you, when I was there, I, I, I felt weak and I, 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 I didn't feel good there. Okay, I feel good where I'm at. I, I, I love where I'm at. I can maintain this lifestyle. Um, I, you know, another thing that I would tell you is that you, you have to keep it interesting. Go enjoy your fitness. I mean, you've worked really, really hard using at-home workout products, okay? Take it outside sometimes, you know? Go play basketball. Go skiing, right? Go, go you know, go enjoy the beach. Go for a run, Find things that you can enjoy your fitness with, whether it's climbing mountains. I mean, let me tell you something. I, I wish I lived in a place where there were mountains. I would go climb mountains all the time, just like Dallas Carter does out in Hawaii. Um, <clears throat> because to me, that would be an, an incredibly fun thing. But enjoy your fitness. That would be another thing that I would tell you is, is that that makes it worth it. When you take it from your living room or your basement out into the world and you go enjoy how functionally fit you are. I mean, that's why we do functional fitness is so that we can go enjoy life so that we can go do things that maybe we didn't do before. I can tell you, I would have never water skied before. I've done that. I would have never went and played basketball with the, with the fellas. And now I get invited to do that. And I love it. Okay. I would have never went for a jog or a bike ride. I'm doing that now. Um, that makes it worth it. That keeps me push and play. The other thing that I would tell you is for me, um, I'm so far out there. I've put my story so far out there. I mean, I, I have no choice. I can't regress. And that's going to lead me into this, this next question, which comes from Liz Pratt. And Liz, is a, she's, she's, she's an incredible girl that I knew back in my college days at Wittenberg University. Uh, she was an athlete at the same college that I went to at the same time. And, you know, she's gotten involved with Beachbody programs and Shakeology and, and, you know, doing things like P90X and Insanity. And she's kind of been a friend to me in this and, you know, uh, you know posting me and, and encouraging me to, to keep on going. But she asked me, and it really is a sincere, legitimate question. She says, do you think you would have stayed course if you hadn't made the business choice to, to make your business about fitness and weight loss? Um, which is legit. I mean, really what she's saying is, you know, Tommy, you've made your entire life revolve around fitness and weight loss and, and, and the mission to reverse obesity, you know, through Beachbody. That's what you do now. That's what you do for a living. Like you don't do insurance anymore and you don't have, you know, I basically have cleared off a lot of my plate and made what I do all about fitness and weight loss and, and helping other people achieve the same thing and, 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 and building a business around that. So, you know, I ask myself that all the time, Liz, and, and to be honest with you, I think a year ago when I left my job in the insurance industry, a, a big reason why I did that was because I knew that if I painted myself in a corner, you know, my, my biggest fear is regression. And anyone who's lost a tremendous amount of weight knows that there's a, there's a fear of going back. And I sit there and I, and I think to myself, it would be just as hard to go back to where I started as it was to get to where I came to, right? It would be equally as hard for me to gain all this weight back because just as hard as it was to change my lifestyle in this direction, I would completely have to change it again. I would have to just quit working out and go eating junk all the time. And it doesn't even really intrigue me. I mean, I mean, at worst, I'm working out at least a few times a week and, and before I might work out a few times a year, okay? So... You know, I don't know, but I, I do think that a big motivation is the fact that this is what I do. And I have made it what I do. I understand that in a lot of other situations that life happens, I can understand why people gain the weight back. But I also think that it has to be important enough to people that they want to stay course in their, their own life. And it brings me to something that, you know, and this goes back to Mike's question about, you know, staying course after you've been in it for a while. I remember I had lost all the weight. They called me to do a QVC show with, with Tony Horton and, and Tracy Morrow. And 
we were there, and I, I had a really sincere discussion with Tony about the what what now. I mean, for for a year and a half, my life was all about losing weight, and all of a sudden, I hit the point where I no longer needed to lose weight. If anything, I might have needed to gain a little bit of weight. Um, it, you know, and Tony said, you know, Tony said, you know what? We train. We don't train for anything but life. I mean, we're training for life. And that sticks with me all the time because the the reason I started doing this, the reason I picked up a DVD, the reason I ordered P90X, the reason that I started working out had nothing to do with the business. It had nothing to do with, with, with changing the lives of others. It had to do with my own belief that I had no choice but to get my own life right because my life was worth the effort. My life was worth every push-up. My life was worth getting it right. And so I have to hold fast to that, that I'm training for life. I'm training so I can enjoy life. And, and the great thing about what I do is that I get to share that with other people. And so it, it, it does all intertwine. And I, I do think that both my fear of regression, I don't know that I could handle gaining the weight back. I think that I really do think, I think that would... That would be almost emotionally and socially overwhelming for me. Um, I'm not the kind of guy that likes to disappoint people. I don't like to disappoint myself, especially. So it's not an option. It's not an option. I mean, I find myself sometimes, sometimes I'm kind of losing track and I'm, I'm going in the wrong direction. And maybe I get up to one, you know, 85-ish. And then all of a sudden I kind of hit this panic button. Oh my gosh, I can't let this happen. And, and I get back to hardcore. So... Great questions, guys, and, and I, I think that what you're going to find is that there's a lot of people out there that have these same questions, that have these same issues, and, you know, listen, if, if you're out there and, and you have questions like this, I mean, I mean, listen, watch these videos, okay, surround yourself with like-minded people, people that want to do this, people that have done this, people that are encouraging you, okay, there's a lot of people out there that will drag you down, beat you up, tell you you can't, all right, you know what, to hell with those people, man, to hell with them, because I'm, I'm here to tell you this. You can. You can do this right. A lot of it is where your mind's at, okay? Where's your mind at, okay? And when you've hit your goals, setting new goals, finding new reasons why, okay? At first, it's about finding enough reason why. Later on, it's about finding new and more reasons why, all right? And, and if you do those things, then you'll find that you stay course. You'll find that you've changed your life, how you live, your daily habits. You're going to find that, that success is going to come and success is going to stay. And isn't that the goal? I believe it is. So, guys, thank you for another edition of Locker Room Talk. I appreciate you. Feel free to give me a shout-out. Feel free to just click the button and, and check out the products at beachbodycoach.com slash swarm2. Uh, it's underneath here. Um, and anything, you, if you have questions about any of it, just let me know. I'm here to help. Talk to you later.